Welcome everybody, this is Alan with Daily Armor of God. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all doing well. This is the Old Testament in 88 days. We're on day 16. And today we're continuing in Numbers. We'll be reading Numbers 8 through 14. And if you guys didn't already know, Numbers is a book of numbers and counting things. So we already experienced it yesterday. The, the name of the book lives up to uh, what it's talking about <laughs> it definitely lives up to the name um, there's just so much numbered counting and dimensions but we have yet more to get through so let's start with numbers 8 verse 1 and Yahweh spake unto Moses saying speak unto Aaron and say unto him when thou lightest the lamps the seven lamps shall give light over against the candlestick and Aaron did so, and he lighted the lamps thereof, and over against the candlestick, as Yahweh commanded Moses. This is the work of the candlestick, was of beaten gold, unto the shaft thereof, unto the flowers thereof, was beaten work according unto the pattern which Yahweh had shewed Moses, so he made the candlestick. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Take the Levites from among the children of Israel, and cleanse them. Thus shalt thou do unto them to cleanse them, sprinkle water of purifying upon them, and let them shave all their flesh, and let them wash their clothes, and so make themselves clean. Then let them take a young bullock with his meat offering, even fine flour mingled with oil, and another young bullock shalt thou take for a sin offering, and thou shalt bring the Levites before the tabernacle of the congregation. Thou shalt gather the whole assembly of the children of Israel together. Thou shalt bring the Levites before the Yahweh, and the children of Israel shall put their hands upon the Levites. And Aaron shall offer the Levites before Yahweh for an offering of the children of Israel. And they may execute the service of Yahweh. And the Levites shall lay their hands upon the head of the bullocks, and thou shalt offer the one for a sin offering, and the other for a burnt offering unto Yahweh, to make an atonement for the Levites. Thou shalt set the Levites before Aaron, and before his sons, and offer them for an offering unto Yahweh. Thus shalt thou separate the Levites from among the children of Israel, and the Levites shall be mine. After that shall the Levites go in to do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. And thou shalt cleanse them, and offer them for an offering. For they are wholly given unto me from the children of Israel, instead of such as open every womb, even instead of the firstborn of all the children of Israel, have I taken them unto me. For all the firstborn of the children of Israel are mine, both man and beast. On the day that I smote every firstborn in the land of Egypt, I sanctified them for myself, and I have taken the Levites for all the firstborn of the children of Israel, and I have given the Levites as a gift to Aaron and to his sons from among the children of Israel, and to do the service of the children of Israel. Israel in the tabernacle of the congregation, and to make an atonement for the children of Israel, that there be no plague among the children of Israel, when the children of Israel come nigh unto the sanctuary. And Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel did to the Levites according unto all that Yahweh commanded Moses concerning the Levites, so did the children of Israel unto them. And the Levites were purified, and they washed their clothes, and Aaron offered them as an offering before Yahweh, and Aaron made an atonement for them to cleanse them. And after that went the Levites in to do their service in the tabernacle of the congregation before Aaron, and before his sons, as Yahweh had commanded Moses concerning the Levites, so did they unto them. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, This is it that belongeth unto the Levites. From twenty and five years old and upward, they shall go in to wait upon the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. And from the age of fifty years, they shall cease waiting upon the service thereof, and shall serve no more, but shall minister with their brethren in the tabernacle of the congregation to keep the charge, and shall do no service. Thus shalt thou do unto the Levites touching their charge. Numbers 9 Yahweh spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai in the first month of the second year after they were come out of the land of Egypt, saying, Let the children of Israel also keep the Passover at his appointed season. 
In the fourteenth day of this month, at even, ye shall keep it in his appointed season according to the rites. And according to all the ceremonies thereof shall ye keep it. And Moses spake unto the children of Israel that they should keep the Passover. And they kept the Passover on the fourteenth day of the first month at even in the wilderness of Sinai. According to all that Yahweh commanded Moses, so did the children of Israel. And there were certain men who were defiled by the dead body of a man, that they could not keep the Passover on that day. And they came before Moses and before Anna on that day, and those men said unto him, we are defiled by the dead body of a man, wherefore are we kept back, that we may not offer an offering of Yahweh in his appointed season among the children of Israel? And Moses said unto them, Stand still, and I will hear what Yahweh will command concerning you. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If any man of you or of your posterity shall be unclean by reason of a dead body, or be in a journey afar off, yet shall he keep the Passover unto Yahweh. Fourteenth day of the second month at even shall keep it, and eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They shall leave none of it unto the morning, nor break any bone of it. According to all ordinances of the Passover they shall keep it. But the man that is clean and is not in journey, and forbeareth it to keep the Passover, even the same soul shall be cut off from among his people, because he brought not the offering of Yahweh in his appointed season, that the man shall bear his sin. And if a stranger shall sojourn among you, and will keep the Passover unto Yahweh, according to the ordinance of the Passover, and according to the manner thereof, so shall he do. Ye shall have one ordinance, both for the stranger and for him that was born in the land. And on the day that the tabernacle was reared, up to the cloud covered the tabernacle, namely the tent of the testimony, Wow, did you guys just see that? <laughs> that caught my eye. Uh, sorry. That was really beautiful. Um, <clears throat> Numbers 9.15 And on the day that the tabernacle was reared up, the cloud covered the tabernacle, namely the tent of the testimony, and at even there was upon the tabernacle, as it were, the appearance of fire unto the morning. And so it was always. The cloud covered it by day, and the appearance of fire by night. And when the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle, then after that the children of Israel journeyed, and in the place where the cloud abode, there the children of Israel pitched their tents. At the commandment of Yahweh the children of Israel journeyed, and at the commandment of Yahweh they pitched. As long as the cloud abode upon the tabernacle, they rested in their tents. And when the cloud tarried long upon the tabernacle many days, then the children of Israel shall keep the charge of Yahweh, and journey not. And so it was, when the cloud was a few days upon the tabernacle, according to the commandment of Yahweh, they abode in their tents, and according to the commandment of Yahweh, they journeyed. And so it was, when the clouds abode from even unto the morning, and that the cloud was taken up in the morning, then they journeyed, whether it was by day or by night that the cloud was taken up, they journeyed. Or whether it were two days or a month or a year that the cloud tarried upon the ta tabernacle, remaining there. The children of Israel abode in their tents and journeyed, but when it was taken up, they journeyed. At the commandment of Yahweh, they rested in the tents. At the commandment of Yahweh, they journeyed. They kept the charge of Yahweh, at the commandment of Yahweh, by the hand of Moses. Numbers 10, verse 1. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Make thee two trumpets of silver, and a whole piece shalt thou make them that thou mayest use them for calling the assembly and for the journeying of camps. And when they shall blow with them, all the assembly shall assemble themselves to thee at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And if they blow out with one trumpet, then the princes, which are the heads of the thousands of Israel, shall gather themselves unto thee. When you blow an alarm, then the camps that lie on the east parts shall go forward. When you blow an alarm the second time, then the camps that lie on the south side shall take their journey shall blow an alarm for their journeys. But when the congregation is to be gathered together, ye shall blow, but ye shall not sound an alarm. And the sons of Aaron and the priests shall blow with the trumpets, and they shall be to you for an ordinance forever throughout your generations. And if ye go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresseth you, then ye shall blow an alarm with the trumpets, and ye shall be remembered before Yahweh your Elohim, and shall be saved from your enemies.
Also in the day of your gladness, and in your solemn days, and in the beginnings of your months, and you shall blow with the trumpets over your burnt offerings, and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings, that they may be to you for a memorial before your Elohim. I am Yahweh, your Elohim. It came to pass on the twentieth day of the second month, in the second year, that the cloud was taken up from off the tabernacle of the testimony. The children of Israel took their journeys out to the wilderness of Sinai, and the cloud rested in the wilderness of Paran. They first took their journey according to the commandment of Yahweh by the hand of Moses. In the first place went to the standard of the camp, and the children of Judah, according to their armies, over his host was Nashon, the son of Aminadab. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Issachar was Nathaniel, the son of Zoar. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Zebulun was Eliab, the son of Helon. The tabernacle was taken down, and the sons of Gershon, the sons of Merari, set forward, bearing the tabernacle. And the standard of the camp of Reuben was set forward according to their armies. And over his host was Eliezer, the son of Shidur. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Simeon was Shelumiel, the son of Zuri Shaddai. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Gad was Eliasaph, the son of Duil. And the Kohites set forward bearing the sanctuary, and the others did set up the, t the tabernacle against the came. And the standard of the camp of the children of Ephraim set forward according to their armies, and over his host was Elishama the son of Amihud. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Manasseh was Gamaliel the son of Pedahers. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Benjamin was Abidan the son of Gideoni. And the standard of the camp of the children of Dan set forward, which was the reward of all the camps throughout their hosts. And over the host was Ahizer, the son of Amin and Shaddai. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Asher was Pegil, son of Akran. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Naphtali was Arai, son of Enan. Thus were the journeyings of the children of Israel according to their armies when they set forward. And Moses said unto Hobab, the son of Raguel, the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law, we are journeying unto the place of which Yahweh said, I will give it to you. Come thou with us, and we will do good to thee. Uh, we will do thee good. And for Yahweh hath spoken good concerning Israel. And he said unto him, I will not go, but I will depart to mine own land and to my kindred. And he said, Leave us not, I pray thee, for as much as thou knowest we are to encamp in the wilderness, and thou mayest be to us instead of eyes. And it shall be if thou go with us, yea, it shall be that what goodness Yahweh shall do unto us the same we will do unto thee. And they departed from the mount of Yahweh, three days' journey, and the ark of the covenant of Yahweh went before them in the three days' journey, to search out a resting place for them. And the cloud of Yahweh was upon them by day. They went out of the camp, and it came to pass when the ark set forward, that Moses said, Rise up, Yahweh, and let thine enemies be scattered, and let them that hate thee flee before thee. When it rested, he said, Return, O Yahweh, unto the many thousands of Israel. And just think about all those people, the logistics of them all like packing up and moving and traveling together. It must have been so, so complicated and difficult because there was, um, I don't know, there, I've heard from different um, commentaries in different Bibles that there was like 2 million Israelites total, 3 million. Um, it, it's somewhere in there. I don't know if we know the exact numbers, but it was a ton of people. And um, it must have been so hard to organize people and to communicate and to, to pack everything up, to move out, to you know start the journey that you're not like overtaking families or you know it must have been very slow going because you know you have to wait for everybody to start walking and moving stuff um just just thinking about all that stuff just makes it seem so it's it's interesting but at the same time it looks it sounds so hard so rough anyway numbers 11 
And when the people complained, it displeased Yahweh, and Yahweh heard it, and his anger was kindled, and the fire of Yahweh burnt among them, and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. And the people cried unto Moses, and when Moses prayed unto Yahweh, the fire was quenched. And he called the name of the place Taberah, because the fire of Yahweh burnt among them. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting, and the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? Do you remember the fish which we did eat and eat freely? The cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all beside this manna before our eyes. The manna was as coriander seed, and the color thereof as the color of bdellium. The people went about and gathered it and ground it into mills, or beat it into a mortar, and baked it in pans, and made cakes of it, and the taste of it was as the taste of fresh oil. That doesn't sound too bad. I think it would be cool. Alright. Obviously, we can never try it, but it would have been cool to try it. Fresh oil. I don't think... Uh, <laughs> Hardly anybody has ever had fresh oil. I've seen uh, different you know, preparations where people bring in their own olives from their olive tree, and then like they get back their own oil, and it's like fresh oil. That would have been cool. Anyway, and when the dew fell upon the camp in the night, the manna fell upon it. Then Moses heard the people weep throughout their families every man in the door of his tent, and the anger of Yahweh was kindled greatly. Moses also was displeased. And Moses said unto Yahweh, Wherefore hast thou afflicted thy servant? And wherefore hast I not found favor in thy sight, that thou layest the burden of all this people upon me? Have I conceived all this people? Have I begotten them, that thou shouldest say unto me, Carry them in thy bosom, as a nursing father beareth the suckling child unto the land which thou swearest unto their fathers? When should I have flesh to give unto all this people? For they weep unto me, saying, Give us flesh that we may eat. I am not able to bear all this people alone, because it is too heavy for me. And if thou deal thus with me, kill me, I pray thee, out of thy hand. If I have found favor in thy sight, let me not see my wretchedness. Yahweh said unto Moses, Gather unto me seventy men of elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be elders of the people, and officers over them, and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation, that they may stand there with thee. And I will come down and talk with thee there, and I will take the spirit which is upon thee, and I will put it upon them, and they shall bear the burden of the people with thee, that thou bear it not thyself alone. And say thou unto the people, Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow, and ye shall eat flesh. For ye have wept in the ears of Yahweh, saying, Who shall give us flesh to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt. Therefore Yahweh will give you flesh, and ye shall eat. Ye shall not eat one day, nor two days, nor five days, nor ten days, nor twenty days, but even a whole month until it come out of your nostrils, and it be loathsome unto you, is that ye have despised Yahweh which is among you, and have wept before him, saying, Why came we forth out of Egypt? And Moses said, The people among whom I am are six hundred thousand footmen, and thou hast said, I will give them flesh that thou may eat a whole month. Shall the flocks and the herds be slain for them to suffice them, or shall all the fish of the sea be gathered together for them to suffice them? And Yahweh said to Moses, Is Yahweh's hand waxed short? Thou shalt see now whether my word shall come to pass unto thee or not. Yahweh's hand waxed short. I shall see now whether my word shall come. What a what a great verse that is. A great verse. And Moses went out and told the people the words of Yahweh, and gathered the seventy men of the elders of the people, and set them round about the tabernacle. Yahweh came down in a cloud, and spake unto him, and took the spirit that was upon him, and gave it unto the seventy elders. And it came to pass that when the Spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. But there remained two of the men in the camp. The name of the one was Eldad, and the name of the other was Medad. The Spirit rested upon them, and they were of them that were written, but not out unto the tabernacle. They prophesied 
in the camp. And there ran a young man and told Moses and said, Eldad and Medad do prophesy in the camp. And Joshua the son Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men, answered and said, My lord Moses, forbid them. And Moses said to him, Envious thou for my sake, would Elohim that is all Yahweh's people were prophets, and that Yahweh would put his spirit upon them? And Moses got him into the camp, and he and the elders of Israel. And there went forth a wild a wind from Yahweh, and brought quails from the sea, and let them fall by the camp, as it were a day's journey on this side, as it were a day's journey on the other side, round about the camp, as it were two cubits high upon the face of the earth. And the people stood up all that day, and all night, and the next day, and they gathered the quails he had, that he that gathered least gathered ten homers, and they spread them all abroad for themselves round about the camp. And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, here it was chewed, the wrath of Yahweh was kindled against the people, and Yahweh smote the people with a very great plague. And he called the name of that place Kibro Hatava, because there they buried the people that lusted. The people journeyed from Kebrahatva unto Hazaroth and abode at Hazaroth. Numbers 12 And Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. And they said, Hath Yahweh indeed spoken only by Moses? Hath he not spoken also by us? And Yahweh heard it. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. And Aaron and Yahweh spake unto Moses and unto Aaron and unto Miriam, Come out ye three unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. And Yahweh came down in the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forth. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, Yahweh, will make myself known unto him in a vision, and will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all my house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches, and the similitude of Yahweh shall, be, shall he behold. Wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And the anger of Yahweh was kindled against them, and he departed. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. And Aaron said to Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned. Let her not be as one dead, of whom the flesh is half consumed, when he cometh out of his mother's womb. And Moses cried unto Yahweh, saying, Heal her now, O Elohim, I beseech thee. And Yahweh said unto Moses, If her father had but spit in her face, should she not be ashamed seven days? Let her be shut out from the camp seven days, and after that let her be received in again. Miriam was shut out of the camp seven days, and the people sojourned not till Miriam was brought in again. And afterward the people were removed from Hazroth and pitched in the wilderness of Paran. Numbers 13 And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou men, that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel of every tribe of their fathers, shall ye send a man, every one a ruler among them. Moses, by the commandment of Yahweh, sent them from the wilderness of Paran. All those men were heads of the children of Israel. These were the names of the tribe of Reuben, Shamua the son of Zakur, of the tribe of Simeon, Shaphat the son of Hori, of the tribe of Judah, Caleb the son of Jepune, of the tribe of Issachar, Egal the son of Joseph, the tribe of Ephraim, Hoshea the son of Nun, of the tribe of Benjamin, Pati the son of Raphu, of the tribe of Zebulon, Gadil the son of Sodi, of the tribe of Joseph, namely of the tribe of Manasseh, Gadi, the son of Susi, the tribe of Dan, Amiel, the son of Gemali, of the tribe of Asher, Sether, the son of Michael, of the tribe of Naphtali, Nabi, the son of Vopsi, of the tribe of Gad, Guel, the son of Maki. These are the names of the men which Moses sent to spy out the land. 
And Moses called Oshia the son of Nun, Joshua, uh, Jehoshua. And Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan, and said unto them, Get you up this way southward, and go up into the mountain. See the land, what it is, and the people that dwell there, whether they be strong or weak, few or many, and what the land it is that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad, and what cities they be that dwell in, whether in tents or strongholds. And what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood therein or not, and be ye of good courage, and bring the fruit of the land. Now the time was the time of the first ripe grapes. So they went up and searched the land from the wilderness of Zin unto Rehob, as men come to Hamath. And they ascended by the south, and came unto Hebron, where Ahiman, Sheshai, and Talmai, the children of Anak, were. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. And they came unto the brook of Eshkol, and cut down from thence a branch with one cluster of grapes, and they bear it between two, between two upon a staff, and they brought the pomegranates and the end of the figs. Wow, can you imagine grapes so big on the vine that two people had to hold it using a staff? Wow, that's crazy. Crazy big grapes. The place was called the Brook of Eshkol because the cluster of grapes which the children of Israel did cut down from thence. And they returned from searching the land after forty days, and they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel in, unto the wilderness of Paran, to Kadesh, and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation, and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came into the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey. This is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report to the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. Whew. Giants. Numbers 14. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night, and all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron and the whole congregation said unto them, Would Elohim that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would Elohim we had died in this wilderness? And wherefore hath Yahweh brought us unto this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be a prey? Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? They said one to another, Let us make a captain, let us return into Egypt. Wow, that's like spitting in God's, that's worse than spitting in God's face. Oh man, that is bad. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. And Joseph the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jepuna, which were of them that searched land, rent their clothes. And they spake unto the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is exceeding good land. If Yahweh delight in us, then he will bring us unto this land and give it to us, a land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against Yahweh, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bred for us, their defenses depart from them, and Yahweh is with us. Fear them not. But all the congregation bade stone with them with stones. The glory of Yahweh appeared in the tabernacle of all the congregation before all the children of Israel. Yahweh said unto Moses, How long will this people provoke me, and how long will it be ere they believe me, for all the signs which I have showed among them? I will smite them with the pestilence, 
and disinherit them, and will make of thee a greater nation and mightier than they. And Moses said unto Yahweh, Then the Egyptians shall hear it, for thou broughtest up this people in thy might in among, from among them. And they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land, for they have heard that thou, Yahweh, art among his people, that thou, Yahweh, art seen face to face, and that thy cloud standeth over them, and that thou goest before them by daytime in a pillar of cloud and in a pillar of fire by night. Now if thou shalt kill all this people as one man, then the nations which have heard the fame of thee will speak, saying, Because Yahweh was not able to bring the people into land which he sware unto them, therefore he hath slain them in the wilderness. And now, I beseech thee, let the power of my Lord be great, according as thou hast spoken, saying, Yahweh is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. Pardon, I beseech thee, the iniquity of this people, according to the greatness of thy mercy, and as thou hast forgiven this people from Egypt even until now. And Yahweh said, I have pardoned according to thy word, but as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of Yahweh. Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have tempted me now these ten times, and have not hearkened to my voice, surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers, neither shall any of them that provoked me see it. My servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him, hath followed me fully. Him will I bring into the land wherein he went, and his seed shall possess it. Now the Amalekites and the Canaanites dwelt in the valley. Tomorrow will turn you and get you into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. Yahweh spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation with murmur against me? I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, which they murmur against me. Say unto them, As truly as I live, saith Yahweh, as ye have spoken in mine ears, so will I do to you. Your carcasses shall fall in the wilderness, and all that were numbered among you, according to your whole number, from twenty years old and upward, which have murmured against me, doubtless you shall not come into the land concerning which I swear to make you dwell therein, save Caleb the son of Japuna and Joshua the son of Nun. But your little ones, which ye said should be a prey, them will I bring in, and they shall know the land which ye have despised. But as for you, your carcasses, they shall fall in this wilderness, and your children shall wander in the wilderness forty years, and bear your whoredoms until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. After the number of the days in which ye searched the land, even forty days, each day for a year shall ye bear your iniquities, even forty years. And you shall know my breath breach of promise. I, Yahweh, have said, I will surely do it unto all this evil congregation that are gathered together against me. In this wilderness they shall be consumed, and there they shall die. And the men which Moses sent to search the land, who returned and made all the congregation to murmur against him by bringing up slander upon the land, even those men did bring up the evil report upon the land, died by the plague before Yahweh. Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Japuna, which were of the men that went to search land, lives still. And Moses told these sayings unto all the children of Israel, and the people mourned greatly. And they rose up early in the morning and got up into the top of the mountain, saying, Lo, we be here, and will go up into the place which Yahweh hath promised us, for we have sinned. And Moses said, Wherefore now do ye transgress the commandment of Yahweh, but it shall not prosper? Go not up, for Yahweh is not among you, that ye be not smitten before your enemies. The Amalekites and the Canaanites are there before you, and ye shall fall by the sword, because ye are turned away from Yahweh. Therefore Yahweh will not be with you. But they presumed to go up unto the hilltop. Nevertheless, the Ark of the Covenant of Yahweh and Moses departed not out of the camp. Then the Amalekites came down, and the Canaanites which dwelt in that hill, and smote them, and discomfited them, even unto Hormah. Well, this is just the very beginning. The 
very tip of the iceberg of the children of Israel not listening to God, to Yahweh. And uh, I mean, I'm, I'm in no way um, thinking of myself more highly than them because we are all sinners for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23. Uh, so we're all sinners and we've all made mistakes and sinned in our lives. Um, but from reading what the children of Israel did, we can learn from their mistakes because they made a great, great many mistakes. Very, 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 very many. So. We can learn from them so that we don't, uh, you know, fall into the same sins as they have. So, good learning experience. Obviously, um, it's best to learn from other people's mistakes rather than making it yourself and facing the con consequences thereof. But, um, yeah. It just goes to show you how much patience and forgiveness that... God had he forgave them over and over and over and gave them every chance and chance after chance after chance and he never gave up on them and they still kept turning from him even up until this day so God is long suffering that's what we can take away from this and uh, I'm just so thankful that Christ died on the cross for our sins so that we don't have to be under the law and under that curse because it was a curse it's impossible to keep the law and nobody has ever kept the law except for one Christ Jesus he was perfect and never sinned so thank you Elohim thank you Yahweh for sending your son to down the cross for us that we can have grace grace through faith instead of being under the law so that's gonna be it for today thank you guys for joining me hope you have a great evening morning noon wherever you're at and as always ttfn tots off for now take care god bless remember to put god first in everything you do have faith in him have trust in him and wait upon him and you'll never be sorry we shall see you tomorrow with more numbers god willingly thanks again we'll see you later